Welcome to Wisdom Church of Manila, recorded live. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. I'm Mark James Dinges, so a member of Wisdom Church of Manila, and today I would like to share my testimony about our financial uh, breakthrough with me and my wife. Last March 2021, we started to purchase a property that I think we were not financially capable of handling. So what we did was we were prideful enough to push through with the purchase without even uh, wondering how we're able to pay for it or where will we get the money from. So once we were able to lock in the contract, we started to approach our parents. First was my father. We asked his financial assistance in getting the down payment for the property, which he's not fully aware of at that time. So I think with that, it caused a big strife between the two of us. July 2021, our loan started with the bank and our parents also was generous enough to share a percentage of our monthly loan payments. Starting from there, our financial struggles started. Generally, we, were, we had the problem on making uh, ends meet. Good thing for us, we were able to attend Wisdom Church of Manila, May 2022. The first thing that struck us was the tithes and offerings. And for the first few months, me and Kim were having like uh, discussions. Pa. We're, we're still bargaining with the Lord na, can we do it just 10% for this month, 50% for this month, until we reach to a point July 2022, that same year, that we'll be fully committed in giving in our tithes as our service and faith to the Lord that He is our provider in every aspect of our lives. So July 2022, we gave 10%, the whole 10% of our income to the church and doors were open for us financially. Projects came in for our business and I started to get an increase in salary. Opportunities for investments were introduced to us without any hassle of looking for one. We felt that it was just the beginning for us as a family for our financial breakthrough. Since we attended the church, we realized that this property that we bought was a stronghold of, our, of the enemy to us to prevent us from having financial abundance in our family. And then late 2022, we started our Fruit of Your Mouth Challenge. We did it as a couple. And one of the things that we listed down there was the sale of this property. And we both agreed that we will be selling this property on a specific price. We based this on Matthew 18, 19, that again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Entering 2023, we were instructed to give blessings to our parents, both my parents and my wife's parents. During December, we, we realized that uh, my parents were trying to sell a property, that they are having a hard time selling a property for the past year. So we started speaking blessing on them on their birthdays, December 9 and December 18. In less than two weeks after speaking blessings to them, my father received a phone call of a prospect buyer for their property. After having a phone conversation with the buyer, all of a sudden they were able to close in the deal. Once he got in the car, he just told me, "Na anak bayaran na natin yung utang sa banko." And it was shocking, shocking. Hirap, hirap na kami nung time nung just to recover kasi parang for more than two years, sarang pinipipray na namin na ilip go yung property kasi nga alam namin na eto yung ane, eto yung hinupon sa amin ng enemy. We thought na it would just stop there. Now that was end of 2023. Now just 2024, we were instructed naman to plant a, a seed. January 28, me and Kim decided na to push through with the seed. I mean, sabi namin, regardless kung saan natin kukunin tong seed na to, basta gawin na lang natin, obey na lang tayo. Then all of a sudden, that night, same day, a friend of mine approached me via text lang. He was interested in buying the property. That same night, we were able to close in the deal. 
deal. And based on dun sa fruit of your mouth challenge namin, we were able to sell the property again on the price that we have declared dun sa fruit of your mouth. Dun ko na-realize na yung, yung financial breakthrough was just secondary to what God has given me personally. Kasi after everything, after everything has settled, dun ko na-realize na God has restored my relationship with my father. Hindi ko na expect And hope, hope this helps you guys out uh, to those who are having financial problems na just lift this to the Lord and siya nang bahala sa inyo. Makinig lang kayo sa leading niya and he'll take care of you. There's Mark over there. If you want to uh, talk to him about his breakthrough in his relationships, breakthrough in his finances, just... Sabi ni uh, RV, uh, sa, sa, he was whispering to me, sa, ang layo na ni Mark, no? <laughs> ang layo na ng learnings pala. <laughs> Malayo. Anyway, um, uh, I've known Mark since the beginning of our church. He has grown in our church. I mean, uh, his faith has just gone leaps and bounds. And you could see it with the fruits in his family, his learnings, his worth sharing. He's a good friend of ours. Uh, anyway, welcome. Welcome to Wisdom Church. Uh, today is actually a Thrive Weekend. By the way, Thrive is our youth. Our youth service is every second, every second and fourth Sundays of the month. So typically about 20% of our church is in Thrive right now. Um, we are in a series break. Who enjoyed last series? The, all the recordings is in YouTube. Okay, it's all uh, seven. Seven, all seven, uh, seven uh, parts of that series is in YouTube on our YouTube channel if you missed it or want to review. By the way, uh, we're going to start a series break for the next couple weeks. And today is about understanding the power of God's unfailing love. Who's, who's excited for that? Yeah. This side is excited. Are you excited? Yeah. This side is still more excited. Are you excited? Yeah. Wow, but malakasita. Are you excited, church? Yeah. Oh, there we go, there we go. Okay, so uh, before we begin, uh, we always start with the tithes and offering. So uh, let's start with Hosea 4.6. I always start with Hosea 4.6. Ever since the beginning of the church, this is the first verse I always say, right? My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. knowledge. In our church, we provide knowledge so that you get the wisdom directly from the Holy Spirit and from your experiences to apply the knowledge properly in your life so you have breakthroughs in areas of your life such as finances, relationships, and your health. It's a direct leading by the Lord. Next verse, please. This is the base verse of Malachi 3.8 for our tithes and offerings. It says, Will a man rob and defraud God? Yet you rob and defraud me, says the Lord. But you say, In what way do we rob and defraud you? You have withheld your tithes and offering. This was the revelation from uh, Mark's testimony about the tithes and offering. As he said, at first they didn't, you know, they couldn't do it. They were praying together, coming to agreement, husband and wife. They did what they could because of the, their heart. The tithe and the offering is always, always a heart issue. It's not about giving to our church. Our Father is our provider. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah Jireh. Whether you give or not, our God will provide for this church because it is the purpose of His church. It is our mandate to actually teach the uncompromised Word of God so that you are able to live and experience an abundant life. But however... To get that revelation in your heart is between you and the Holy Spirit. But they were seeking. As they sought, they were able to provide, give the uh, tithe a little, all the way after a few months to a full tithe and look at the financial breakthroughs. Why? Because according to the next verse, God opens the floodgates of heaven and pours out a blessing. Do you believe God? Then that's His promise. I believe that too. And a lot of people here in church believe it. So a lot of times you just have to meditate on the word more until you know that you know that you know you know if God says it, he will do it. Right, church? Yeah. Let's go to the next verse. Malachi 26, 13. Then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have brought the hallowed things, hallowed, set apart, the holy things. In this case, specifically, it is the tithe out of my house and moreover, 
have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the sojourner, to the fathers and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I know, paulit-ulit lang tayo, right? My wife says yes. That was a trick question. Anyway, yes, paulit-ulit lang tayo. Why do we do it? Because repetition, repetition, repetition. And one of these days, you'll get an aha moment. I don't know when that is. You know, sometimes you, this is just over and over and over. And one of these days during your quiet time, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. And all of a sudden, the seed that's planted in your heart starts to blossom. And then you have this revelation. And then now you're open to hear from the Lord. Anyway, here we see that ha the tithe is hallowed. It is holy. It's not yours. It belongs to God. Again, also in this verse, it is not a suggestion. It's a command. And as we all know, if God gives a command, disobeying God is a sin, right? It's not a trick question. Is, dis is disobedience a sin? Yes. yes, we talked about this last week. And uh, a lot of people after church last week say, natapaka ng kukunila, natapaka ng mga uh, toes nila. So today, I'm not going to do that. You could just talk to my uh, lovely wife here. Because she did that a lot last week, right? Yes? Yeah. But it's a good teaching. Very good. I've had so many positive feedbacks. Okay, it's a teaching that, need, that you needed to hear in this church. Anyway, in Psalm 12, let's go to Psalm 112. God has a promise when you obey His commands. Did you know that? You know a lot of His blessings is, if you do this, I will do that. Okay, here's one of them. It says, praise the Lord. Happy. Are you happy? Yeah. Wow, lakas na na. Happy is the person who honors the Lord, who takes pleasure in obeying His commands. Again, the good man's children will be powerful in the land. His descendants will be blessed. And here's the promise. If you take pleasure, say take pleasure. So it's not just obeying His commands. It's taking pleasure in obeying his commands. Here's the promise. Then his family will be wealthy and there's the word again, rich. It's like Deuteronomy 8.18. And he will be wealthy, rich, prosperous forever. Who wants to be wealthy, rich, and prosperous forever? Don't say, that. oh, prosperity teaching yan. Well, this is a prosperity verse. You know, a lot of verses is prosperity. There's really no verse on, I will bless you with poverty and lack. <laughs> There's nothing like that. So either you accept it or you won't receive it. If you don't accept it, you won't receive it. You know, you, this is like the religious spirit. Oh, prosperity. Oh, that's uh, about being wealthy and rich, right? And they're like that. But deep inside, they want it. Why don't you just be honest to the Lord? Lord, this is your promise to me. I'm your child. You're a father, right? And if you have the capability of blessing your children with wealth and prosperity and uh, being a good man and hand on and returns to your children's children, would you do it? Why? You love them. That's the topic today. Love. Parang galing, parang pinagpractice lang natin tana. No, that, that was not, actually, that's not practice. It's because of the love of the Father. Say, the love of the Father. A lot of the misconceptions, a lot of the lies of the enemy is against the love of the Father. And if you don't understand the love of the Father, you will not understand Scripture. You won't understand His Word. Okay? Where am I now? Let's go to, uh, actually, this is the verse from last week. Last week's verse. Next verse. 2 Timothy 2.9. It says, Nevertheless, the solid foundation... Of God stands, having the seal. The Lord knows those who are His. Are you His? Yes. yes. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. This was the base verse last week. Say, depart from iniquity. We need to understand that every blessing from God, including prosperity, has this as its foundation, departing from iniquity. Iniquity. Not inequity. Iniquity, difference. Iniquity means unrighteousness, wickedness, sin. Sin. Here's another verse, another foundation. So that was a foundation from last week. But today, I want to talk about a different foundation. 
to receive God's blessing. Next verse, please. Proverbs 23, 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. My ways, says the Lord, not your ways. Did God say, my son, give me your cash? Did he say, give me your last pesos? No. God said, give me your heart. That's, if you think God's taking your money, you don't understand. He's not after your money. He's after your heart. He's after your heart. heart. Next verse, please. If you don't understand this, Psalm 37, 4, it says, Delight yourself also in the Lord. See? Delight. Delight. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. When you delight yourself in the Lord, what does that, what does that mean? Joy with the Lord, according to my wife. You love to spend time with him. You can't wait to wake up in the morning and take a walk with him. You are committed to him. I take delight to my wife because I am committed to her. Do you feel like that with, your, with the Lord? You show your affection, your devotion. Bottom line, you love the Lord. Say, love the Lord, love the Lord. with all your heart. When you delight in yourself in the Lord, you do things His way. You don't try to do things your way. It's God's way. You would hate sin so much as God. You know the story from last week, like when a cockroach comes in and starts to fly? I hate that. I would stay away from it as fast as I can. Do you hate sin as much? You know, last week, that was like the only thing that uh, most people in church remembered. <laughs> but you would be excited. You would be excited to do things for him because you love the Lord. Do you love the Lord, church? Yes. Everybody knows this verse, 2 Second, uh, Second Corinthians 9, 7, right? This is the famous verse on giving. It says, let each one give as he made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart. heart. Not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it, giver whose heart is in giving. Giving, tithes and offering, it's always a matter of the heart. It says here, God does not love a giver. Did I read that right? Does, does God love a giver? Exactly. Not just any giver. Break down this word. Break down the scripture. It's not just a giver. It's a cheerful giver. The one who gives cheerfully. Therefore, if you give without being cheerful, it's wasting your seed. Giving without being cheerful or joyous is a waste of your seed. So, <gasps> and dami kong nasayang na seed. That's okay, there's grace, right? But hopefully that's a revelation. When you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and give, not as a burden, but as a delight, cheerfully, that's when you receive God's blessings, according to this verse. Turn to your neighbor and say, give cheerfully. Give cheerfully. Now turn to your other neighbor and say, give with joy. Give Don't give like it's a burden, like you have to do it. It's not what God is after. It's always your heart. Why? Because there's also a verse that you cannot worship both God and mammon. In other versions, money. In other versions, mammon, which is the spirit behind money. You know, he never said, God, God, uh, you cannot worship both God and Satan. It was a spirit. Because he already knows that your heart, if the spirit of mammon is there, he will not have your heart. He is after your heart. Say, he's after my heart. Good. Church, when you do not delight in your giving and in your service, actually, to the Lord, that's when you'll suffer lack. 
Do you know that uh, many believers suffer in lack, financial lack? Do you know why? If you really study this verse, these verses, because a lot of people, not in this church, okay, they complain. Oh, that's another preaching on tithes. They complain. You don't understand them. They're murmur. That doesn't happen much in our church. I'm so happy with our church because you understand. We are to teach the Word of God. He is after your heart. Say, He's after my heart. He's not after my money. If you think that's, it, if you think that's what church does, you don't, you don't get it. You don't understand. It's because the Lord knows that if you're so tight with the cash, you will not hear Him. If you're so tight with the cash, you won't be able to direct it like he wants. If you're so tight, uh, there was a story. He said he let go of a seed, Mark said, a significant seed. And then right then and there, boom, a much more significant financial breakthrough. It's always about the heart and obeying the Lord. Right, church? Your breakthrough is on the other side of your obedience. Say, my breakthrough, my breakthrough is, on the other side is on the other side of my obedience. my obedience. Now, anytime you're not excited, cheerful, or joyous, your offering, your seed, is a waste. So give. Give with the gladness of heart. Your love and affection of the Lord is crucial in doing things His way, God's way. Let's take a look at this verse. I saw this verse. I said, this is one of the points I want to make. Next verse. It says, and Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statute of his father. Okay, so he loved the Lord, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. So this was a significant offering of King Solomon. Say, Solomon loved the Lord. It did not say Solomon gave to the Lord. It said Solomon loved the Lord. It was love, by the way, that drove Solomon to offer to the Lord a thousand burnt offerings. It started out with the heart. Don't mix it, church. It always starts with the heart. He wasn't giving to the Lord to get. It's actually just a byproduct. You will get because that's God's promise. But that was not his main reason. He gave because he loved the Lord. His giving was just an expression of his love, love for God. Is that how you give, church? Is that how we give? It's something to think about. I'm not looking for an answer. I feel, I feel you've got some answers here. But that's the heart, the heart of giving. It was love for God. It was, it was what opened up the realm of the supernatural plenty. The realm of supernatural God's prosperity that Solomon enjoyed. Can I go to this next slide, please? Giving to God without a heart-seated affection for Him will always lead to frustrations. The quality of your love for God determines your future your future in the kingdom of God. It always starts with loving God because when you love God, you will hear Him. Because when you hear Him, you will want to obey Him. And when you obey Him, there's where the blessing starts, the overflowing blessings that everybody's looking for. Let's go to the next uh, verse, last verse, please. 1 Corinthians 13.3 says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not... Love, it profits me nothing. What does that mean? It means if you give without love, it cancels out your blessing, your giving. It cancels out your giving. It profits you nothing. It starts with love. It starts with the heart. Does this make sense? Does this help, church? Because I know that's just culture, right? I don't want it to be just culture. I don't want it to be just, oh, tithes, oh, offering, no, no, no. Spend time with the Lord. He will direct you where to plant your seed, what seed to sow. Because if you obey the Lord, that it is Him who will make it grow for your harvest. Now, if you do it your way, then it's up to you 
to reap your harvest. It is the degree of your love and affection for God that determines the multiplication of His grace, of His favor that you enjoy. Say with this me, church. Say this with me. Lord, help me stay in love with you and in the affairs of your kingdom. I'm not just talking about tithes and offering. Granted, that is part of it. I'm talking about your purpose in the kingdom. What are you supposed to do? It's between you and God. Can I hear an amen? amen. Do you receive this message, church? Yes. Okay. Does this help? Yes. Now, uh, if this is your church, uh, typically the tithe comes to this church because this is where you are fed the word of God. However, if you are a visitor... And you are, this is, you're just a visitor. The tithe goes to your church. Does everybody have an envelope? If you don't have an envelope, please raise your hand so that you could pass on the envelope. By the way, if you don't know already, in our tithes and offering are confessions for favor of an abundant life and an abundant life. Does everybody, does that, do you guys read this? Do you confess this? You know, you could actually take one and then, or, you know, just put it on your desk so you could actually declare this over your life. Anyway, the kingdom, by the way. In the kingdom, there are four steps. How many? Four. Four steps to receive your harvest. Number one, we're talking about planting a seed now, right? Open your heart. The first thing, God wants to know what is the harvest that you are looking for. You have to identify the harvest. Again, in Psalm 37, verse 4, it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. What are the desires of your heart? You probably know this already because it's what's on your mind a lot, right? It's what keeps you preoccupied. Is it that promotion that you've been wanting for since last year? Is it salvation for a loved one? Is it healing, complete restoration of body from head to toe? Is it to pay off a massive financial debt? Is it a restoration relationship with your parents? What is it? Write it down. By the way, if uh, you have a prayer request, after church service, we have our church uh, prayer team here. They can come with you in agreement with your prayer. You can come down right after church. Just write it down. Write it down right now. If you are online, write it down. There is a mystery where you actually take a thought and start writing it down. This is the fruit of your mouth challenge. There's a reason why you write it down. It's the first step of actually taking an idea and writing it down and then declaring it. Number two, ask the Lord right now with an open heart, Lord, for this harvest, what is the right measure of seed for this harvest? Be careful, be careful. Do not let the enemy steal this word right now. Because the Lord speaks in your heart, and typically when it's from the God, that's it's like, huh? But lucky. And then the enemy say, I get it online. Start to reason it out, okay? If that's if you're iffy, put it on hold. You have to be at peace and be joyful and cheerful and excited like you're expecting. When you, when you plant a seed, you expect a harvest, right? Who, who, who here has a garden? Garden, anyone at their home? No one has a garden? Wow. Who, who, who here goes to grocery? Anyway, who here has a garden? So if, for example, if you plant tomato, do you expect tomatoes to come out? And then pag bum bum na, it's like, wow, you're excited, right? You expect, you don't plant tomato seeds, expect it all to die. Same with an offering. That's why you need to be excited. What is it? So ask the Lord right now, what's the right measure of seed? Lord God, speak to everybody here right now for the right measure of seed to sow, for the harvest they're looking for in Jesus' name. Number three, you obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Let's uh, lift up your envelopes and declare these verses. Actually, these, this declaration from the verses out of faith. If you're in faith, lift up your envelope. There's power the enemies looks at this and they see you uh, having faith 
and declaring God's word back to him. Father, I choose to have faith and believe your word. You said if I keep the tithe, I am robbing you. I will never rob you another day of my life and expect you to bless me. So today I bring the tithe of the income you gave me and I plant my seed offering as a form of worship. And you said that you would open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing I do not have room enough to contain. So Lord, I ask you now to water my seed and bring back to me the harvest, the 30, the 60, the hundredfold. As I believe, so shall I receive. Today, Lord, I am a child of faith. I believe that I receive when I pray, and I seal it with praise and thanksgiving. And if you believe this, shout amen. Amen. Pass the baskets, please. When you lay down the tithes and offering, don't just throw it. The tithe is holy. Say, Lord God, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring back the holy tithe to you. Lord God, I thank you, Lord, that you you delight in my prosperity. Thank you, Lord, for blessing the works of my hands. Thank you, Lord, that you know the desires of my heart. Thank you, Lord, that I hear you clearly. I thank you, Lord, that you're always with me. I thank you, Lord, you are Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I thank you, Lord, you are El Shaddai, the God of more than us. I got it. You know, everything you've been asking for from the Lord has already been done. It's past tense. We haven't taught in that in a while. But it's past tense. Why? Because everything got nailed on the cross. Your healing is done. Your prosperity is done. Your restoration is done. So maybe that's what you need to know that you've been asking and asking and asking. And here's the, our Father say, goes to, says to you, Anak, I've already done it. And that, you're just not claiming it. It's actually increasing your capacity to receive. Sometimes your capacity to receive is not big enough. That's why you are not receiving your harvest. A lot of times because of uh, guilt, shame, like the I don't deserve this, that type of mentality. A lot of Filipinos have like, ay, nahiya ko. Do you know hiya is not from God? It's not from the Lord. You come with boldness because you know who you are. You know who you are in Christ. You know you're a child of God. You know what's yours in your inheritance. Kung nahiyaka, who's saving mahiyaka? Would a father say, would you tell your kids, oh, mahiyaka naman? Actually, Filipinos would say that, right? <laughs> so this is, but, but it's not in scripture. Give me a Bible verse on that. How is everybody? Good. Can everybody extend their hands, please? Lord God, in Matthew 18, 19, you say, Again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father, which is in heaven. Lord God, as I lay my hands and touch your holy tithe and the offerings of the church, Lord God, I ask for the 30, the 60, the hundredfold return. Lord God, we send our church angels right now, our reapers, to bring in the harvest now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Without further ado, today's uh, speaker on understanding the power of God's unfailing love. We have a taglish service today. It's actually, it's, 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 it's 90% tag, uh, 10% lish. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's mostly Tagalog. She is the lead of our prayer team, the lead of our discipleship ministry. Please welcome Sis Isil Reyes. Thank you, Pastor. Ah, arte. <laughs> Bago tayo magsimulag, so kumunang i-acknowledge yung help ni Esther. Si Esther po yung assistant ng prayer team po, assistant leader ng prayer team. Siya ang ating official interpreter sa ating foreigner na si Mayaga couple. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, bago ko simulan to, ano, um, very common na alam ko yung topic na to, palagi natin siyang naririnig. And kahit nga nasa mall ka, pwedeng may magsabi sa'yo na, uy, mahal ka ng Panginoon. Pero, 
enough ba na madinig lang natin siya versus sa maintindihan talaga natin dito? Ang sabi kasi sa akin ni Holy Spirit, magkaiba yung alam mo dito versus sa naiintindihan mo talaga dito. And bago mag-end ng preaching na to, gusto kong isishare ko sa inyo bakit ito yung topic na sinabi sa akin ni Holy Spirit na i-release sa inyong lahat. Pero bago yan, let's pray first. Lord, thank you. Maraming maraming salamat sa topic na to. Wala akong ibang sasabihin kung hindi ang pagmamahal mo na inaalaw kita, Holy Spirit, na i-release sa dila ko. Kaya naman, I ask you, Lord, that through the power of your Holy Spirit, let every word that will come out from my mouth penetrate the hearts and the minds of of your body, O oh God, of every pe- every person listening sa preaching na to, whether live or recorded na, or even after five years pa niya to, mapanood. And just move mightily, Lord. Umupo ka dyan sa harapan, Panginoong Jesus, at pakinggan mo kung paano ko ibibida ang dakila mong pagmamahal. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wala pa, na- naiiyak na ako, pastor, ang wala pa. <laughs> Okay, bago ko simula, no, i-summarize ko lang, itatakil ko ngayon yung um, kung gano tayo kinover ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng pagmamahal niya. And later on, maiintindihan natin lahat na walang area ng buhay natin ang hindi niya natakluban ng pagmamahal niya. First point, let's understand that, lo- that His love is with you every morning. Yes, may pangako po ang Panginoon tuwing umaga na iniintay niya lang pala tayo, na i-expect natin ito. First verse, Lamentations 3, verse 22 to 23, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Biro mo umaga pa lang, may advantage na pala kaagad tayo. Maaaring gumagawa ang enemy, uh, let's say, ngayon pa lang, hindi pa naggagab- naggagabi, nagpa-plot na ang enemy ng lahat ng tactics para mapanghinaan ka ng loob. But the good news is, may promise si Lord na araw-araw may bago tayong aasahan. Sa ibang version nito, hindi mercies yung ginamit pero yung goodness yung nakalagay doon. Isa pang uh, uh, patunay na may pangako si Lord tuwing umaga. Sabi sa Psalm 42 verse 8, Yet the Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime. So dapat pala talaga mag-increase yung expectation nating lahat dahil sa umaga pa lang, Ika nga, parang may naka... A, ano bang ano yung pas, yung ganon? Archer. Archer, may pang ganun na, parang ganun na picture out ko, may pang ganun na si God, at yung bala noon patungo sa atin, nakatumbas ng loving kindness niya. At d- dito ko na, naunawaan na sa umaga pa lang, ni, alas dosi pa lang ng madaling araw, nakaline up na lahat ng kabutihan niya sa atin. So, paano mangyayaring may tao na magsasabi, well, kaya naman nasabi ng tao to kasi na-influence ng demonyo. Narinig niyo na ba yung may nagsabi na, pangit ng gising ko? Pangit ng umaga to, hindi maganda, parang hindi pabor sa akin ng lahat. Lahat ng yun pala ay lies ng kaaway. Paano mangyayaring pangit ang gising mo kung sa umaga pa lang papunta na sa'yo yung loving kindness ng Panginoon? Um, gusto ko lang pong i-share sa inyo. Alam nyo, itong buong preaching na to, hindi ko po to sineshare, masabi lang makapag-preach. Dahil yung bawat item na to, naranasan ko po. And isa sa gusto kong i-share sa inyo, na tinuro sa akin ni Holy Spirit. Sabi niya, isa sa advantage ko, dapat yung, uh, di ba sabi, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So lahat ng lumalabas sa dila natin, katumbas siya ng araw, natitira sa kaaway. So first thing pa lang in the morning, ang tinuro niya, kahit gumaga pang pa ako sa kama at hindi pa makatayo, ang lagi niyang tinuturo sa akin, sabihin ko, I declare and decree that I am well loved by my Father in heaven. So dun pa lang pala, panalo na tayo. Kapag alam natin dito na ginising tayo ng Panginoon, na hindi niya tayo ginising na sinipa, gumising kang babae ka, pero ginising niya tayo na punong-puno ng pagmamahal. Next point naman, um, ito yung, dito, ko, dito sa Bible verse na to ma-highlight na yung paggising pala sa atin ng umaga, ng Panginoon ay may purpose. Sabi kasi sa Isaiah 50 verse 4, uh, the, sovereign, the Sovereign Lord has given me His words of wisdom so that I know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, He wakens me and opens my understanding to His will. So meaning, al- alam niyo yung commercial ng Nescafe, para kanino ka gumigising sa umaga? 
na ang tamang sagot pala doon, gumigising tayo sa umaga para sa Panginoon. Naginigising pala niya tayo, hindi lang puro ako, 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 kundi gagamitin niya tayo sa iba. Paano makapag-release ng words of comfort, words of encouragement? Sino sa inyo gustong magpagamit sa Panginoon? Yeah, ang daming sumagot, Pastor. <laughs> Okay, second item. Understand that His love is with you even at night. Ito pong next na Bible verse. Na sa, sino sa inyo dito nakakaranas ng demonic dreams? Maikling tulog? Umiinom ng... Ano ba yung ininom na bibili sa mercury? Yung para makatulog ka? Melatonin. <laughs> Thank you, sis. Yes, yun, itong, for itong uh, uh, mga Bible verse na sasabihin ko, please makinig kayong mabuti. Ang sabi dito sa Psalm 42 verse 8, In the night, His, his song shall be, be with you. Karugtong puto nung sinabi ko na, Yet the Lord will command His loving kindness in the daytime. And sa gabi, may pangako ang Panginoon na yung kanta niya ay nasa sa atin. Hindi po ito yung first time na nakalagay sa Bible na ang Panginoon natin ay kinakantahan tayo. Wala ito sa slides, pero nakalagay sa Zephaniah 3 verse 17. Uh, um, ano ba yun? The Lord is singing deliverance over you. So, ibig sabihin, kahit pala natutulog tayo, kay pagod na pagod ka, kay nalimutan mong manalangin o nasa middle ka ng nightmare, ang kanta ng Panginoon sa atin ay kanta ng punong-puno ng pagmamahal. Kung, Tito Jeff, ikaw ay isang magulang, hindi ba? May mga apo ka na rin. Pero, di ba, nung maliliit pa ang anak mo, l- a- ang heart ng magulang, paggabi, lagi niyang hinehele yung anak niya, kay gabi o tanghali, hindi ba? Kung ang physical na mga magulang, ganun yung heart, ano pa kaya yung Panginoon natin na kinakantahan tayo ng songs of deliverance, songs of joy, songs of breakthrough, songs of favor, at lahat ng kanta in order for us to believe and fully understand the power of His unfailing love. Next verse na gusto kong i-point out dito, uh, itong two verses na to para sa inyo na nakakaroon ng demonic dream. Sabi dito, Proverbs 3 verse 4, When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Two promises in one verse. Ang pangako niya na hindi ka matatakot at magkakaroon ka ng sweet sleep. Ang sabi dito sa mundo, pag tumatanda ka daw, umiikli na lang yung tulog mo compare sa tulog ng bata. Hindi po ako naniniwala doon. Kasi yung, nung, nung ang daddy ko buhay pa at yung mami ko, kung matulog sila, sila na lang ang senior citizen na tanghali ng gumising. <laughs> Sobrang lalim po ng tulog niya. And ganun na ganun din po ako. Next verse, Psalm 4 verse 8, In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Two promises in one verse. The promise of peace at ang pangako niya ng pagiging safe natin. Gusto pong i-share sa inyo itong testimony, no? Nung nasa eyesight days pa lang kami, na-share ko to sa Seeds of Abundance, meron po akong kasamahan dati sa previous church. Nakikwento lang siya. Wala siyang balak na magpa-deliveran sa akin. Nakikwento lang siya. Uh, all her life, ng pagtatrabaho niya, ang tulog niya lang, araw-araw, biro niyo, isa o dalawang oras lang. Eh, ang taong walang tulog, Aning-aning na, di ba? Kung ano na nang naisip. And real to, kitang-kita sa mukha niya, nangangalumata na siya ng husto. Mga siyang zombie, real to. Tapos, uh, ang, tinuro po ng ating pastors dito yung power of uprooting demonic seeds, uh, canceling um, demonic agreement with the devil. Shinare ko yun sa kanya. At itong two verses na to na nabanggit ko, yung shinare ko sa kanya. And believe it or not, kaya pala ang tagal niyang mag-reply the next day. Dahil, all her life, first time niyang nakatulog, straight 10 hours. So, biro mo, ang, ang, ang buti ng Panginoon na kahit sa pagtulog natin, wala dapat demonyong gumambala sa atin. Walang dapat kahit anong pag-aalala ang pwedeng mag-penetrate sa isipan natin. Next, uh, next po na gusto ko i-share sa inyo, Psalm 91 verse 5, Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day, ang tactic ng enemy, day and night, Meron siyang mga paandar. Pero may mas malaking paandar ang ating Panginoong Isokristo na may promise siya in the night and may promise din siya in the day. Gusto pong i-share sa inyo na alam nyo ba, ako din naman po nagkakaroon ng demonic dreams. And isa sa palaging tumbuisit na demonyong to, na ako po ay binabangungot minsan. Alam nyo yung, ako po, ang, ang skin ko po dati ay hindi ganito. <laughs> Ang skin ko dati ay nakakadire, parang kaliskis po ng isda. At yung anit ko, 
Uh, ang balakubak ko noon, ang dandruff ko noon ay parang chocolate hills. Ngayon po, para mas maintindihan niyo yung buong testimony ko, magpo-promote ako, Pastora, TFC subscribers, pakipanood po ang Gerald Balite YouTube channel. Nandun po ang aking <laughs> ang full testimony. <laughs> okay. Ang, ang nangyari noon, matagal na akong pinagaling ng Panginoon. And gusto ko pong ishare sa lahat na creative miracle po yung nangyari sa akin. In an instant, pinaltan ng Lord ang balat ko from head to foot. Ngayon, for a time, bumabalik siya sa panaginip. Nananaginip ako na tumutubo ulit yung mala chocolate hills na balakubak ko. So, gigising ako ng ganito. <gasps> Alam, na, narangyari na ba sa inyo yon pag, pag bad dream na ma, ma, parang hinahabol niyo yung hininga niyo? Ang tinuro sa akin ni Holy Spirit, mabilis siya sa instruction sa akin, speaking tongues. So, nag-speaking tongues ako, uh, nag, in Jesus' name ako, and para po i-take note nyo, at po yung ginagawa ko, ang lagi kong sinasabi, I declare the oil, the fire, and the blood of Christ Jesus all over myself. At lagi kong sinasabi sa demonyo, binubusalan ko ang bibig mo. In English, I shut the mouth of the liar for our TFC subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> so, ang, ang sinasabi ko nun, binubusa lang ko yung bibig mong demonyo ka. Ang sinasabi ko, Hoy, kahit di ko naman siya nakikita kung nasaan, sinasabi ko, Hoy, makinig ka sa sasabihin ko. Ang sabi ni Lord, once the sun sets you free, you are free indeed. Malaya na ako sa kahit anumang sakit. And nire-remind ko po ang demonyo na ang Ang, ang kasama sa napanalunan ni Jesus, hindi lang yung sakit na cancer, hindi lang yung sakit na chronic kidney disease, pati balakubak, pati chicken skin. Alam niyo po ba yung braso ko noon, nakakadiri para siyang may sand kasi sa dami ng chicken skin ko. Pero ngayon, walang wala. <laughs> Next naman po, nagustuhan ko siya siya number three item. Understand that He did not withhold anything from you because he loves you. Alam ko, lagi na tong tinuturo ng ating senior pastor. Pero pakinggan niyo sana ako dito kasi may nalaman akong revelation sa Panginoon. Ewan ko na lang pag hindi pa kayo nakumbinse na binigay na sa inyo ng Panginoon ang otoridad niya. Sabi niya sa Ezekiel 37 verse 4, kaya nating buhayin ang lahat ng tuyong buto. Hindi naman siya literal na tuyo, no? Lahat ng dry, kung meron kayong BPI na stagnant, kayang-kaya niyong sabihin na I prophesy to you, come alive and hear the word of God. Pero may isa pa po talaga na sobrang-sobrang talagang no-brainer. Alam mo, yan na yung authority mo. Sabi sa Jeremiah 22, 29, O earth, 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 listen to this message from the Lord. Alam ko, tinuro to ni Pastor Riz, sa Bible, kapag three times inuulit yung salita, ibig sabihin, reminder talaga siya. Kung tatlong beses mong kausapin yung buong mundo, lahat ng nalagpak dito habang nabubuhay ka dito sa mundo, lahat ng ninakaw ng demonyo, sinira niya, naisahan ka, lumagpak na opportunity sa kamay mo, you can speak this promise. Sa ibang version lang, nakalagay yan, listen to what I say. So lahat ay makikinig sa lahat ng sasabihin natin. Alam niyo po may one time ano na ang mami ko ay nanonood ng TV. Ito po ay sa teleradyo. Uh, can you please explain what teleradyo means? <laughs> okay. So uh, doon po, hindi ko na matanda kung attorney or government official yung in-interview. Dinidiscuss niya yung ibig sabihin ng cease and desist order. So, sabi sa akin ni Holy Spirit, pakinggan mo yung, ti- yung tinuturo niyang guest. Yun pala, ang ibig sabihin ng cease and desist order, it is an official order handed down by a government agency or court directing a person or entity to stop doing something immediately. Such an order effectively places an injunction on the person or entity that prohibits the named activity as suspicious or illegal. Cease and desist orders may, be, may also be issued to force a person or entity to refrain from a labor practice or method of competition deemed unfair. In short, you have the authority to release cease and desist order. Lahat ng illegal na ginawa sa inyo ng demonyo, lahat ng pinaghiwalay ng demonyo, nagkabaon-baon kayo sa utang, lahat ng kademonyo ang ginawa niya, isampal niyo yung cease and desist order sa pagmumukha ng kaaway. Ngayon, kung meron po tayong TFC subscribers na nagtatanong, hindi naman po ako government official, hindi ako si Mayor Binay, paano to? <laughs> well, ang nakalagay po sa Bible, tayong lahat, pamula kay Christian hanggang doon kay, kay John at Joting, tayong lahat ay ambasador ni Jesus. May masihigit pa ba doon? Next po na gusto kong i-share sa inyo ay, dito naman po tayo sa second na 
uh, hindi niya pinagdamot sa atin, his garments. From head to foot po. I- 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 Ihihimayin ko po to in three parts, head, body, and feet. Punta po tayo sa heads. According to Psalm 103 verse 4, He crowns you with love and compassion. Obviously, ang crown nilalagay sa ulo. Next verse, Job 29, 14. Justice was my robe and my turban. Ah, ang ganda ng pronunciation ko ng fat. Turban. <laughs> ang turban po, para sa kaalaman na lahat, ay yung, teng- ay tenga, yung telang nilalagay sa ulo. So, ibig sabihin pala, sa ulo palang, panalo na tayo, hindi lang crown yung nilagay niya, kundi pati turban. So, pwede niyo po yung isabihin sa kaaway, I'm wearing the turban of justice. <laughs> Paandar. <laughs> Next naman po na sasabihin ko sa inyo ito, Psalm 23, alam kong alam na alam niyo na ito eh. The Lord anoints our head with oil. Nag-research po ako. And according sa research, para na ako si Kuya Kim nito at ano pa sa, according sa research ko, uh, ang oil pala ay talagang nilalagay ng mga pastol sa ulo ng mga tupa. Yun pala, palagi ang, ang head ng sheep, lagi siyang pinalilibutan ng mga langaw to the point na doon mangingitlog tung mga pesting langaw na to. So, in, kaya pa, ang point dito ng mga pastol, uh, bilang protection siya sa mga inaalagaan niyang tupa. And same as sa biblically speaking, yung, ang description ni God dito, yung oil ay nilalagay niya sa ulo natin para ayaw kasi ng Panginoon dahil sa kapangyarihan ng pagmamahal niya sa iyo, Tita Janet, sa iyo, Sis Jeannie, ayaw niya na maging payatas yung isipan natin. Short, ayaw niyang maging bas. Ay, payatas is the um, like smoky mountain, like, um, ano ba yun? G- garbage dump. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So ayo in short ayo nyang maging basurahan yung bib, yung bibig natin, yung ating yung ating uh, isipan. And alam nyo, marami sa mga kabataan mabilis ma-depress, mabilis magpakamatay kasi dito lagi sila tinitiran ng kaaway. So isa to sa alas natin. Every time na papatulo na yung luha mo at magwo-walling ka na yung favorite mo, 'di ba? Pasaris magwo-walling. <laughs> Ako nga pala nga. Yeah, yeah. Every time na magwawalling ka na, panghihinaan ka na ng loob, eto yung alas mo, the Lord uh, anoints my head with oil. In Jesus' name. Next naman, punta tayo sa body. Sabi sa Isaiah 61, 10, uh, For He has clothed me with the garments of salvation, and He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Obvious na obvious na damit yung tinutukoy dito. And as I go along, makikita nyo, hindi lang literal na garments yung palatandaan kung ano yung mga damit na sinuot sa atin ng Panginoon. According to Isaiah 61, 3, Garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. Alam nyo ba tong Bible verse na to? 2021 po nung namatay ang tatay ko, yan ang paulit-ulit kong diniklara dahil ang demonyo pinipilit na magtagal sa akin yung spirit of grief pero hindi ako pumayag. Lagi ko po yan dinideklara sa akin at sa nanay ko kaya naman po mabilis po kaming nakamove on at lahat ng nakakakita sa amin laging sinasabi parang hindi naman kayo namatayan. Diba napakabuti ng Panginoon. Yes, hindi naman bawal umiyak pero ayaw niya na babyhin natin yung pag-iyak na yun anumang kalungkotang iyon. Next na gusto kong i-share sa inyo, Isaiah 61, 7, Instead of shame and, dis, uh, and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land and everlasting joy will be your three garments in one verse. The garment of double honor, garment of double prosperity, the garment of everlasting joy. Every time na, na nakikita mo yung bank account mo, uh, bumababa, i-declara mo to, hoy, demo nyo ka, eto ang mga suot kong damit. Double portion of prosperity. Neck-neck mo. <laughs> okay, next. Psalm 104 verse 15. Wine that gladdens human hearts. Oil to make their faces shine and bread that sustains their hearts. Eto po ay garment natin dahil ang wine sa Bible sinisimbolize ng dugo ni Jesus. Ang oil sinisimbolize si Holy Spirit at ang bread sinisimbolize ang word ni God. Next naman po, punta tayo sa feet. According to Romans 10.15, and how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Biro mo ang description niya sa paa mo, Tito Jeff, napakaganda. Hindi dahil nakagucci ka na sapatos o nakadolce and gabana na ano, na rubber shoes, pero dahil ikaw ay bearer ng good news. Naniniwala po ako tong Bible verse na to ay hindi lang pang fivefold ministry, hindi lang pang pastor, hindi lang pang prophet. Yan po ay para sa lahat. Yung simple lang na makinig ka sa, sa, sa problema ng kaibigan mo, 
lending ears na hindi ka puro ganyan pero makikinig ka lang. Better ka na ng good news. Bakit ko nasabihin? Kasi nakalagay sa Bible, di ba? Be quick to listen. And naniniwala ko, kaya ka naging quick mag-listen dun sa tao kasi naging quick kang mag-listen kay Holy Spirit na pakinggan mo muna yan. Huwag kang magpayo, makinig ka muna. Hindi ba? Next naman po na gusto kong i-share sa inyo ay uh, tawag dito. Since we are meant, the, yung feet natin, ang description ni Jesus ay napakaganda. Kaya pala ganto ang description niya sa paan nating lahat. Psalm 18 verse 33, You make our feet like the feet of a deer. You cause us to stand on the heights. Sa madaling salita po, let's watch this video. Wala po itong sound. Pero kung makikita nyo, ito pong mga hayina, tinitira tong tatlong deer. At kung makikita nyo kung saan nakatayo yung deer, ay sa paslant na bundok. So kahit anong gawin nung hayina, hindi siya makababa dito. Hindi niya madukwang. Yung mga, interpret the dukwang, please. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, in short, sige, pwede na natin stop yung video, uh, Jervy. In short, uh, ang, ang tinuturo sa atin dito ng, ng, ng Panginoon, kaya niya pala describe na ang paan nating lahat ay eh, kagaya ng paan ng isang usa. Kasi kung saan niya tayo nilagay ay pinaka mataas, pinaka rurok sa pedestal na hindi hindi maaabot ng demonyo. Saan? We are seated right next to Jesus according to Ephesians 2.6. Next po na gusto kong ishare sa inyo and... Uh, hmm, Malapit na po tayong matapos, pero letter C. So matutal, ang hindi niya pinagdamot sa atin ay ang Espiritu Santo. The Bible tells us ng trabaho ni Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, to guide us and to teach us and to remind us lahat ng sinabi niya. So lahat po nung na-share ko sa inyo, lahat ng yan, bagamat din nyo napituran o hindi nyo kaagad naintindihan, siya ang magre-remind po niyan. At naniniwala ko na si Holy Spirit, pinusisyon niya tayo sa pinaka-safe na lugar, isang lugar na mararanasan natin, talagang hindi papali ang pag-ibig ng Panginoon, walang iba, kundi sa arms niya. Dahil sabi po sa Deuteronomy 33.27, The eternal God is your refuge and His everlasting arms are under you. Dito po papasok yung sinyar ko sa inyo kanina. Saan ba nagmula itong topic na to? Bakit ito yung sinabi niya sa akin? Gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo itong revelation na nakuha ko kay Holy Spirit. December last year po, nagpunta po kami kay La Pastora. May event po sa kanila. Nauna ako, si Mark. Andito si Mark? Ah, nauna, andito ako, si Mark, ah, at saka si Kim. Ngayon po, sa eksenang yun, si Pastor Riz, kausap niya po si Mark. Si Kim, dala-dala niya yung anak niya na baby. And may anak pa po silang isa, si Kai, yung napanood niyo po sa testimony, na six years old. Si Pastora po ay merong pang aso, aso na ang pangalan ay Zoe. Si Zoe po ay medyo challenging sa kanya talaga, ang makakita ng bata. So yung bata, siyempre, hindi mo mapipigilan, takbo, takbo, takbo. Ang pwesto nila, tanda-tanda ko, ito si Pastor Riz, ito si Mark, ito si Kim, ito ako. Si Kai, papaikot na dito, not knowing na sasakmalin na pala siya ni Zoe. Ngayon, ang bilis ng mata ni Mark, kasi kausap niya si Pastor Riz, eh, ganun pa siya. <laughs> ganun pa si Mark eh, ganun pa si Mark. Pero yung peripheral ng mata niya, kita niya pala kung anong nangyayari sa anak niya. Ang ginawa ni Mark in a split second, Kinuha niyang ganun si Kai, nilagay sa likod. Ang bilis ng, ng, ano niya, ng, ng galawan ni Mark. And then doon ako kinausap ng Panginoon. Nung tinatanong na ako ni Pastora kung anong topic, nung tinanong ko si Holy Spirit, ano ang gusto niyang topic, ito yung pinarimahit niya sa akin. Kasi sa eksenang yun, si Kai po ay hindi tumakbo kay Pastor Riz. Hindi sa akin. Kung tutuusin, mas malapit ako sa kanya eh. Pero doon siya tumakbo sa tatay niya. So ang pinupunto dito ni Holy Spirit, Kahit pagbalibalik ta rin man ang sitwasyon natin, ano man yung nasa harapan natin, o nasa likod na hindi mo alam, sasakmalin ka na ng demonyo, parang ganun. Ang mata ng Panginoon nakatuon sa iyo, you are the apple of God's eye. At kung gano ang bilis ng, ng, ng ano ni Mark, nung dinukwang niyang ganun yung, interpret dukwang again, dinukwang niyang ganun yung anak niya at nilagay niya sa likod, ganun din kabilis ang ating Panginoon. And dun sa exen ng yun, Si Kai, hindi po siya umiiyak. Tawang-tawa pa siya doon kay Zoe. And ganun yung mindset ng gusto, ang gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. We can laugh at our future kasi yung future, taken care na yan ng Panginoon. Tapos na yan eh. Tapos na yan. 
Isa pa po sa gusto kong i-share sa inyo, no? a day before i-present ko po ito kay pastora, nag talk po kami ni Holy Spirit. Kasi, maaring i-share ko to sa inyo, maloloko ko kayo, pwera siya. Tinanong ko siya, yung tinuturo naman to ni pastora, sabi, ang turo mo, di ba, pas, pwede kaming magtanong kay Holy Spirit. So, tinanong ko siya, hindi ako makahinga. <laughs> Nasaan na ba yung music team? Kailangan may nagpa-piano para MMK yung dating natin dito. <laughs> I said, where is the, the pianist? <laughs> wala pa, pa, wala pa. I don't, you can play, ah, English pa. You can play, please, so I can, um, you know, <laughs> interpret. <laughs> okay, dito po, dito po sa eksenang ito ay, anong tawag dito? Wait lang. Nawala ako, wait. <laughs> Ba't ang init? <laughs> Intayin ko muna. Intayin po na natin si Mark mag-commercial. Ano po ulam nyo kanina? Mag-commercial. <laughs> Ay, hindi, 3.30 na. O, sige, tutuloy ko na nga ito. Uh, tawag to. A day before po, i-present ko to kay Pastora. Tinanong ko si Holy Spirit. Sabi ko, um, ano po bang, meron bang area ng buhay ko na hindi ko naiintindi? intindihan talaga yung pagmamahal mo? Kasi ang topic ay understanding eh. Hindi naman no, kundi understand. Niriltok niya ako. Sa mga nakakakilala po sa akin dito, lagi akong natatag na Honda. Alam niyo po ba kung ano yung Honda? Honda dat. Honda dat umuwi. <laughs> so, yun, di ba? <laughs> Nakakatawa. <laughs> so, lagi po ako natatag na, eh, hindi lang po dito yan sa Wisdom Church. Kasi, miski sa previous church ko noon, na seven minutes away lang sa bahay namin, ang bilis ko umuwi. Lagi ako nagmamadaling umuwi. Miski nung tatrabaho po ako sa corporate world, ang bilis ko laging umuwi. Oo, ando na yun sa, sa probinsya po kasi ako nakatira. Pero nung tinanong ko si Lord na, so ano pong hindi ko naiintindihan doon? Bakit ba ako nalabela ng ganun? Ang sabi niya sa akin, na-influence ka ng fear. Fear saan? Palalim po itong palalim itong share ko sa inyo ha. Fear saan? Fear na natatakot ako sa traffic. Fear na natatakot ako na, uh, tawag dito na, yung mag-drive ng madilim. Mag-drive mag- na gabi na. Pero dito niya po talaga nilaliman. Sabi niya, hindi naman daw talaga doon nag-ugat yun. Nag-ugat iyon. No, uh, <laughs> feel na feel ko na. Feel na feel ko na, Nathan. Mga talaga. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pwede na? Okay na? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dito po pala to nag-ugat sa, uh, nung pong, hindi ko matanda kung high school ako nito o grade school. Ang sabi po ni Holy Spirit, kung bakit pala ako mabilis umuwi ng maaga, lagi, akala mong, akala, akala mong magpapadede pa ako ng anak, eh, wala pa naman ako anak. <laughs> Parang ganun lagi yung mindset ko. Pero kaya pala ganun kasi nung ako po ay nag-aaral pa lang, Umuwi po ako sa bahay one time na wala pong tao sa bahay namin. So alam ko, galing sa work ang mami at daddy ko. Uh, ang nangyari po nito, uh, inintay ko sila kung si- sa mga nakapunta na po sa bahay namin, nandun ako sa sliding door. Binuksan ko yung sliding door. Humiga ako sa sahig na nakaganyan habang nakatingin sa garahe at iniintay na umuwi. Yung mga magulang ko. Tapos, nung tinrobak ako ni Holy Spirit, sabi ko, anong root cause nun? Nalaman, malaman-laman ko po pala, after, ang tagal, gabi na sila nakauwi, malaman-laman ko, lahat pala sila, mami, daddy, and dalawang kapatid kong lalaki, nagpunta sa bahay ng lola ko kasi may celebration, pero hindi po nila ako sinama. Sinadya nila na hindi ako imbitahan. So sabi ko, Lord, akala ko, napatawad ko na sila. Ang sabi sa akin ni Holy Spirit, yes, napatawad po na, mo na sila, pero may sting pa rin. May hold pa rin yung fear sa paanong paraan. Kaya pala po ako lagi nagmamadaling umuwi dahil nag-uugat siya, dahil natatakot akong maiwanan. Natatakot akong mag-isa. So in short, all along, ang laki ng influence ng orphan spirit sa buhay ko. Feeling rejected, feeling abandoned. So, ang sabi ko sa Panginoon, Lord, sige, uulitin ko. Kung hindi ko pa napapatawad yung mga magulang ko at pati yung mga kapatid ko, sige, I release forgiveness sa kanila. 
wala ni katiting na galit. Binapatawad ko sila. And then, sobrang iyak ko na nito, nangyari po yung self-deliverance sa buhay ko. So, singa ko ng singa, napasukan ako. Sumuka ako, alam nyo kung bakit. Yung shinare ko sa inyo na cease and desist order, inisyo ko po yan sa spirit of fear and sa orphan spirit. Hindi pa ako tapos magsalita na deliverance na po ako, lumayas tong mga demonyong to sa buhay ko. So, ang sabi sa akin ng Panginoon, marami sa buhay nating lahat ang hindi nagmamanifest dahil sa hindi ka lang nagde-declare. Yun ay dahil hindi mo naiintindihan yung pag-ibig niya talaga sa iyo. Sa case na yon tinanong ko si Lord, Lord, salamat, pinakita mo yung behind the scenes. Ano yung ginawa sa akin ng demonyo ng time na yon Pero alam niyo ba, nung tinanong ko siya, Jesus, nasan ka nung araw na yon na feeling abandoned ako? Nakita ko po siya sa vision na nakaupo din siya sa sahi at hinihimas yung ulo ko. So ang totoo dito, hindi na wala ang Panginoon. So maaring may nakikinig nitong preaching na to, either live or recorded na marami sa buhay nyo ang hindi nagmamanifest, may mga pinapanalangin kayo hindi pa natutupad. You may also ask the Holy Spirit, baka may kailangan punutin sa nakaraan. E ang buti ng Panginoon, kasi bago ko ito prinisen kay pastora, malinis ako. <laughs> hindi ko kayo madadaya eh. Kahit hindi ko madadaya ang Panginoon, alam niya lahat. He examines our hearts. E napakasarap pong magpatawad, higit sa lahat, napakasarap malaman na yung kapangyarihan ng pagmamahal ni Jesus, hindi lang para i-comfort tayo, but His love can also deliver us from evil. Gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo na uh, tawag dito na yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Hindi lang niya pinapakita ko ano yung behind the scenes ng demonyo sa buhay natin, pero even yung behind the scenes kung nasaan siya sa eksena. Totoo pala siya nung sinabi niya sa Bible that He will never leave you nor forsake you. That even in the darkest times, bulin ka man. Ako naranasan ko, binuli ako ng sarili kong pamilya. Pwera siya. Bitla, lulunok lang ako. <coughs> Gusto ko pong sabihin sa inyo na kung ako inalis ng Panginoon sa pity party, ganun din kayo. Dahil ang party na gusto niyang atinan niyo, kundi yung party ng praise and worship sa Kanya. <coughs> Pumasok dito yung eksena ni Holy Spirit na nilid niya ako sa truth. Ano pong truth to? Ang sabi sa John 14 verse 18, I promise that I will never leave you helpless or abandon you as orphans. Hindi ka nag-iisa and never kang hinayaan ng Panginoon na mag-isa. Tuturuan niya tayo na when we fully understand, we grasp the power of God's unfailing love, tuturuan niya tayong tumayo. Hindi lang tumayo na masabing nakatayo, pero tuturuan niya tayong tumayo ng straight body, nakasaludo sa kanya, to our commander-in-chief, kaya nating lumaban at mag-issue ng cease and desist order sa mga kaaway. Gusto kong i-end tong preaching na to sa Bible verse na to. Uh, 1 Kings 8.56 Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to His people Israel according to all that He promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises He made through His servant Moses. And I believe this is the thing that He wants us to understand. Ang ino-offer ng Panginoon naka-attach sa pagmamahal niya ay ang kapahingahan, ang rest. Rest na kahit anong mangyari sa harapan mo, ang paa mo ay kagaya ng isang usa, unshakable, immovable as mighty Mount Zion. Thank you, thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. May I invite everyone to please stand up. <coughs> Pwede ilagay mo doon, doon sa gilid. Yes.
Isaiah 54 verse 10, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet your unfailing love for us will not be shaken, nor your covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has, con who has compassion on you. Lord, thank you. Thank you so much. Kahit anong mangyari, mahal mo kami, period. Maraming maraming salamat, O Lord, that we are blessed in the daytime and blessed in the nighttime. That you sing songs of deliverance for us in the daytime and songs of deliverance in the nighttime. Oh God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, oh God, that you never stop speaking blessing and directing your loving kindness unto us in the daytime and in the nighttime in Jesus' name. That you created 24-7 for us, for you to showcase your love for us, oh God. And Lord, I ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your forgiveness sa mga times na nireject namin ang pagmamahal mo. Sa mga times na hindi namin naiintindihan yung kapangyarihan ng pagmamahal mo. Sa mga times na akala namin may hindi pa pala kami nagagawa kaya hindi nagmamanifest yung prayer namin. Yun pala ang kailangan lang pala namin maintindihan is to rest on you knowing that your love will never fail us. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoong Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord, maraming 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 salamat, Panginoong Jesus. Pinapupurihan kita, Lord, sa lahat ng pagmamahal mo. Kilala mo ang lahat ng nandito. Lahat ng nasa music team. Lahat ng nasa shuttle. Lahat ng nasa VIP. Lahat ng nasa event. Lahat ng nasa, um, ano ba, lahat ng ministry, ng ministry of health. Kilala, kilala mo lahat. At yung level ng pagmamahal mo sa bawat isa sa amin, never na didiminish, never na babawasan. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoong Jesus. Lord, thank you, thank you so much for teaching us and reminding us the power of your love dahil ang pagmamahal mo, hindi hindi kami bibiguin. Ang pagmamahal mo ay hindi kami iiwan, hindi kami bibitawan. Maraming maraming salamat, O Lord, na kung paano yung eksena nating dalawa na all along nandun ka pala nung eksena nyo, naniniwala ko na may nakikinig ng panalangin ito, na meron rin siyang ganong eksena sa buhay. And I believe the Lord wants you to know and to fully understand that the same love He has shown to me is the same love He is showing you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can we speak in tongues first? surrender sa Panginoon. Kung kapatid kita sa Panginoon, kagaya ko na matagal nang nananampalataya sa Kanya and yet may gusto kang isuko sa Kanya na gusto muling magsimula ka sa, sa Kanya. Maaari ba kitang imbitahan na lumapit dito sa stage? Maaari ba kitang ipanalangin dito? Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoong Iso Kristo. Kung meron man po dito na nakikinig ng panalangin ito, na gustong isuko ang buhay sa Panginoon o gustong magrededicate ng buhay niya sa Panginoon, pwedeng-pwede po kayong lumapit dito. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Meron pa po bang iba? Meron pa po bang iba? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
The Lord wants you to know that you are His ambassador and He's so proud of you, bro. I see your bank accounts increasing as you humble yourself to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I speak clarity to you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let every confusion to be uh, get out now from your life in Jesus' name. I speak the spirit of wisdom to be upon you in Jesus' name. I speak the spirit of understanding, the spirit of comfort, the spirit of encouragement to be upon you. You are a man of God, a man of God in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, oh, every negative word spoken against you, I nullify it in Jesus' name. I release cease and desist order sa lahat ng mga demonyong nang bully sa iyo, bro, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I speak justice to be upon your head in Jesus' name that from this day forward, you're gonna walk in so much confidence because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Lord, pinapalakpakan namin ang kabutihan mo. Lord, thank you. Thank you. We receive your love, oh God. We receive your love. We receive your love. We receive your love, Jesus. We receive your love, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Church, pwede ba nating kantahin tong kantang to? Can we sing it like we mean it? We sing it like we mean it.
favor for you for this coming week. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we receive all the power, all the authority, and all the love that you have showered upon us today. Lord, we thank you. And I just speak for every person in this congregation, for every family in this congregation, that this coming week, Lord God, we will hear your love. We will be reminded of your favor. We will be speaking to you and you will hear us and you will be speaking to us and we will obey with open heart. Lord, I thank you and I just speak to the enemy right now. I command you in silence to cease and decease to move your hands off of our people right now in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that with your love we stand in power and authority. We praise you, Lord, and we glorify you. And this week is full of that power, authority, love, and favor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. For more of Wisdom Church of Manila's preachings, you can visit our website at wisdomchurchofmanila.org.